Back now to the recent rioting and violent disorder in a number of English and Northern Irish towns and cities. Let's give you an update on the numbers of arrests since the unrest began almost two weeks ago. There have been more than 740 arrests. If you break that down, more than 300 people have been charged in connection with the disorder. 118 people are now behind bars. Yesterday, the first jail terms for encouraging unrest on social media were handed out to three men. Tyler Kay, Richard Williams and Jordan Parler. 26-year-old Kay was sentenced to three years and two months in prison for inciting racial hatred online. These counter-protesters also received sentences yesterday. Samir Ali and Adnan Gafur said they had been provoked by anti-Muslim insults in Leeds before punching a group of men. The judge said that was no excuse. More sentences expected to be handed down next week. Our reporter Katie Barnfield has been to Bolton to see how communities affected by the violence have tried to move on. Nearly a week on from the violence that gripped Bolton, the town is still feeling the impact. Several people have now been arrested after tiles, bottles and fireworks were thrown between two groups of rival protesters. But some business owners say it's left people frightened to come here. Rumours going through and my customer is scared, he don't come and we very bad situation about it till it's still. Amran says the takings at his shoe shop are down 80% over the past week. How can I pay my rent and rates and you know business, everything? It's not I feel for personally, oh he killed me or something, that's no problem, I know. <laughs> but main thing, he killed my business. Arif had to close his restaurant on Sunday after rocks were thrown outside. It's been so quiet since, he's struggling to cover his rent. Usually, I have in the lunchtime over 200 customers and the breakfast around 150 customers coming. But yesterday, before yesterday, three days ago, was the, mark, the, the town centre empty. The door is open, but no people. The week's disorder across the northwest comes at a time when many business owners are already struggling. The Federation of Small Businesses say for some it will be a difficult road to recovery. Bear in mind, some of these businesses are on you know, really wafer-thin margins. They've got high staff costs, they've got business rates to pay for, uh, energy bills are still sky high. So this is just another cost to bear for them. You know, for many, it will be the final nail in the coffin, actually. Greater Manchester Police are still looking for 12 people over the disorder that broke out here last Sunday and say they want to reassure communities they have the resources in place to protect them from further disruption. I heard in the news now he takes a third COBRA meeting. That's a good sign. It means the government is very seriously take this all concern. I think in the, the market come back quickly like this, you know. Uh, I so will... you feel hopeful? You feel I hope positive? I, yes. Local businesses here in Bolton are just hoping that rumours of more protests this weekend don't come to pass. We're joined now by Imam Adam Kelwick from Abdullah Kilian Moss. Good morning to you. Good morning. And also by Denise Irving from Citizens Advice in Sunderland. Good morning, Denise. Thanks very much for joining us. Good um, morning. Adam, let, tell me about what, what happened where your mosque is, England's oldest mosque, is that correct? It is, yes. Uh, it goes back to Victorian times. Uh, it was founded by uh, a, a British imam uh, back in the late 1800s and the first Muslim community uh, in our country was uh, a bunch of white Scouse Muslims, so it's a very interesting story. There's a real history. So what happened then last week? So we saw what happened after the tragic stabbings in Southport. That escalated quickly and turned into the, the riots against the mosque in Southport. And then a short time after, we saw rumours on social media that our mosque was going to be the next target. Uh, we didn't know what to expect in terms of numbers. How is this going to go down? And so uh, we decided to take uh, a lesson from the founding father of the mosque, Sheikh Abdullah William Henry Quilliam. Because back in Victorian times, uh, people, a mob gathered outside the mosque, they threw stones, smashed the windows, and his response was to open the doors the next day and invite those people in and feed them. And so we, uh, I put a message out on social media that anybody who comes to protest against our mosque, you will be our guests and we'll prepare food for you. And uh, we, we, we reached out and lots of beautiful, genuine relationships were built on that day. 
to the extent where later this evening we actually have an event in the mosque, uh, an open door event where people can come in and ask us the tough questions, what they want to ask, and we've promised them honest answers, and that's all on the back of the protests. I mean, what happened as well is that there were hours, weren't there? Two, three hours of screaming, shouting, yeah. abuse. About yeah. 50 people outside? Uh, yeah, the protesters were about 50 people and about 500 people were supporting the mosque. And they were from all walks of life as well. Um, and so you had to listen to that and then you were given the go-ahead by police to yeah, go out. that's right. So the kind of questions, I just... Because actually, we'll come to that in a moment, because I want that there's a very contrasting picture... I think, in terms of how that potential potential bad situation mm -hmm. turned out. Yeah, Denise, just want to tell us a little bit. People, good morning, by the way. People will be familiar with what happened to the place you work and, and feel very strongly about. Um, remind people what happened uh, when it was first attacked. Um, I got a call from Luke, one of our team, um, to say that somebody had put our windows out. Um, and we knew nothing about the, the riots at that time. So I was trying to find somebody who could um, effectively board up the, the large window that had apparently been boarded out. Um, and then I rang Luke back and I was told that the, the building was on fire, at which point um, I think everybody watched it on social media and the news um, go up in flames, unfortunately. OK, take the story forward. So and we, we can see the images there. And it is one of those images that a lot of people were seen on that night. Uh, and take the story forward. What's happened since then? So we um, obviously um, we couldn't go into Sunderland on the Friday night. So I was there at six o'clock the following morning, um, assuming that I would get in to be able to to clean up and be ready to start again on Monday morning. And I was told that wasn't there was no chance of that at all. Um, so basically we had to walk away and leave it and we didn't get into our we've got two units on that row we didn't get into our second unit until monday and we still haven't been able to get into the unit that was burnt out so yeah um fortunately i met with patrick melia the the chief exec of sunderland city council at six o'clock um outside the offices um and we were offered some space to do our face-to-face -face advice from city hall um, and we were able to get other staff to work from home um, and, and we had a telephone service and a face-to-face -face service running by Monday at 9 o'clock. Um, uh, Denise, and... I, I hesitate to sort of conjure it this way around, but a lot of people are trying to look for positives out of what has been very difficult circumstances and you've, been, you've seen it firsthand, you'll know the trauma, uh, but what have you taken in terms of positives from the reaction you've had subsequently? Um, I think we've been blown away by the amount of kindness and support that we've had. We're used to be, being the ones that give the help and the support. So actually, on Saturday morning, I was blown away by the, the people that were out cleaning the streets, offering cups of tea, dishing out biscuits and support, really. Um, and it, it's it's just um, spiralled since then. We've had so many offers of support for space, for help painting, for cleaning up, to take calls. We've had so much support, it's unbelievable. Um, and Sharon Smiles set up a, a GoFundMe page for us, which completely shot me by surprise. And it, it's over 15,000 now. So um, we just can't believe the support and the kindness of the people within our community and beyond. Adam, I can see you're just smiling there, listening to the community, how the community has reacted. And you said, like, this weekend, you're inviting more people to the mosque, people who have no idea what goes on in there or, you know, what the religion is about. What are you expecting? So we have a very busy weekend ahead. First of all, we have this event uh, later this evening and uh, we're just going to invite people. And I know the magic is going to be made at the end of the event when everybody can mix and eat food together. So even though people will have to listen to me talking for a while, I'm going to try not to talk for too long. I want to invite people's questions because I think that's very important yeah, as well. people don't want to be lectured, do they? Yeah, but we, we, we also have to recognise, and this has been a common theme through this whole discussion, that there are genuine people in the ranks of people who've been dragged up into these protests and they do have genuine concerns. Now, what I think will happen is once we start to hear those concerns, we can also let them know that those issues also affect us, that our concerns... What's the most common question you're asked? Uh, it, it depends, but usually the issues around terrorism, around women's rights, around extremism and, and, and things which 
you know, they, they, they affect us all, you know, grooming gangs, these, these kinds of things which you hear time and time and time again. Our community suffers from these issues also. So let's come together and let's work against them together. Adam Kerwick, Imam at Abdullah Quilliam Mosque. Ha uh, good luck with the events this weekend. Uh, Denise Irving, Chief Officer at Citizens Advice, thank you so much. And I'm so pleased that you can reflect. Uh, you know, there's a positive reflection to have on something that was so awful. So thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast too. Thank you.